Good morning. Would you please stand and sing with us? so grateful and thankful for this day that we're able to come here and worship you Lord um, we thank you so much for your love um, your never-ending love for us um, each and every day even through our shortcomings um, we pray Lord today that you open our hearts and open our minds to focus on the message and receive your word and that you would help us to lift our voices high as we worship you this morning in Jesus name amen I need 
Christ my all in all, the joy of my salvation. our home through every trial my soul will sing Jesus is here to God be the glory Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me turning back I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning back, no turning back. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. Christ is connection here. Um, we're so happy that you're here with us this morning. I just have a few announcements to go over um, and then Dennis Lee will be preaching for us this morning. I'm so excited to have him with us. Um, the Foundations class, they're doing their Thanksgiving boxes again this year and that's such a wonderful ministry that that class does. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can contact Deanne Lewis or anyone in that class, I'm sure. Um, there is no children's programming tonight. They are on fall break, and we want them to enjoy their fall break with their families. So they will pick back up next Sunday night. There was one other thing, and I don't remember. Oh, the men's Bible study. They pick back up tonight. Um, they took last week off, and if you need a book, they're in the back in that little Amazon box, or you can ask John Tomanko. Um, and if we run out of books, I can order more. There are a few more announcements in your bulletin. There are some beautiful Christmas ornaments in the back that our fourth and fifth graders are selling. And if you have any questions about that, Lee or Mark Radline or any fourth or fifth grader can answer those questions for you as well. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you. So I'll turn it over to you. Good 
Well, good morning. Um, it's good to see you here, and it's good to be here, to, to be with you. I'll be looking at the scripture shortly and um, the message, but before doing that, let's again go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we have come together today to worship you. We praise you as our creator and savior and guide. We thank you for your unconditional love and your forgiveness. We're grateful for the newness of each day. Thankful for the opportunity we have to make a fresh beginning, a new start. Thank you for all of our blessings, both spiritual and material. You've taught us in scripture to bear one another's burdens. So we pray today for those who are going through difficult times Pray for the poor, for the sick, for those who are depressed and anxious. We pray for those who are in danger from the fury of the elements of nature, as well as for those caught in the middle of warring forces. We pray for those who are grieving some loss. For all of these, we pray for what is needed, whether it be healing or comfort or encouragement or deliverance. Show us how we can be channels of your love, channels of your work. Use us as your witnesses. Reveal to us the right path to take at home, at work, at school, in the church, in the community, wherever we are. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord, who taught the disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's turn now to the scripture lesson for today. I'm not sure my version is going to be the same one that's up there, so you might have to work on this a little bit. Um, I'm reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 14. I'm going to read the first verse and then verses 12 through 14. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or, or relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Well, did any of those words that I read strike you? Are to we are we to take seriously or to put it another way, are we to take literally the words of this passage? Was Jesus suggesting that we not entertain friends in our home or family in our home? I don't think that's what Jesus was saying. We know from a number of passages in the scripture that Jesus enjoyed socializing. He enjoyed eating with people, all kinds of people. There are examples of him doing this with his closest disciples, the 12, also with other friends, sometimes strangers, and even critics. The four gospel accounts show that Jesus would often use hyperbole. Jesus would exaggerate to make a point, to drive it home, to help us remember what he was trying to teach us. That point made in the passage that I just read is this. We are to help people who cannot help us in return. Those who have no means, no ability to help us in return. There are many ways that we can help people who are less fortunate than we are. I want to illustrate just one way. And I'm going to tell four short stories. And they are true stories. Yola Ten had watched with uh, fear as the famine had come to dry and rot the fruit of her land. People in their province of Cambodia were jobless and they were hungry. Yola did everything she could to feed her children. Her brother was a servant in the home of one of the government officials and he would help her find bits of food in the trash cans. But that was not enough. So she begged in the street for what other morsels of food she could obtain, but that was not enough either. The hollow faces of her children just stared at her when she came home and divided among them what she had gathered from people and from trash cans. Yola grew more and more tired. She was not only that way because of, of lack of nourishment, but also the mental strain of knowing she was waging a battle she could not win. There was no food, no work. The only sure thing seemed starvation. But then light came into her dark world. One of the public nurses told her to come to the nursing station the next day. And she was told that there would be food for her children. And Yola could hardly believe her ears. She thought it might be just another rumor. But the next day, she was there. She appeared at the appointed time, and there was food. There was milk for our children. There was flour for making bread. It was doled out in very small allotments, but it was real. And she was told that this was going to be available every third day so she could come back that frequently. 
as we can imagine, she was happy uh, beyond belief. At long last, there was food for our table. She didn't know from whom it had come, didn't know how long it might last, but it brought hope for the health and for the survival of her family. And after several weeks, Yola could notice a difference in the energy level of her children, and she herself was sleeping so much better at night. She was incredibly grateful. Story number two. Abba Abin was a strong man. He had been an athlete in his uh, school days. Because of his desire to be out of doors, he never advanced very far in school. He found a nearness to God being outside, close to the soil. And that was his choice, and he loved it. Abba was born late in the lives of his parents. And because of their failing health, he never married. As an only child, he felt the responsibility of taking care of uh, his parents. Abba's parents noticed that their son was growing more and more somber. He was not eating much. Uh, he was not sleeping well. When his parents asked him about it, he acknowledged that he was worried about the political strife in his country. There were rumors that their nation was going to be invaded by a larger neighboring country. And before long, those rumors became reality. Their nation was invaded. And as a result of that armed conflict, the fruits and the vegetables of the land were not harvested. They could not be harvested. And soon food was no longer available in the marketplaces. The citizens began to suffer. Abba and his aging parents felt the pain and begin to see the signs of their own hunger and malnutrition. Abba considered suicide, but instead he hung on. With ingenuity and with the help of some friends, he brought home enough food to keep the family alive a little bit longer. Then one day, Abba went to the village and he was stunned to see a large truck where people were dispensing food. He ran home and got a container and then ran back to the truck. He was given food and he was promised more in the days ahead. So at last for him, here was hope. Abba's parents gained strength and he offered up prayers of thanksgiving to God. Story number three. Viya was shocked while he was away with his girlfriend for an afternoon. His mother and father were accidentally killed in a boating accident. He was the oldest of four children and he was only 14. What would they do? How would they survive? Life was not easy in their South American Indian tribe. Everyone managed to barely eke out a living. Survival now fell on 14-year-old Viog, and he was scared. 
The neighbors and friends were good to him, but there was a limit to how much they could do. One day, V uh, had a visitor who came to his door and asked to talk. He had never seen this man before, and the man introduced himself as William. William explained that he was headquartered in a neighboring tribe and that he was there at Villa's house to offer food and clothing and training for Villa. Training in a skill that Villa could then use to support the family. <clears throat> but Villa was cautious. He said few people trusted members of other tribes. But he was desperate, needed help. So he agreed, and soon he and William became friends and Villa was receiving the help he was promised. Things began to come together for the good. Villa missed his parents, but he never ceased to give thanks for William and thanks for William's friends who gave them food and clothing and training and enabled them to live a normal life. Story number four. Mark Steele was a happy-go-lucky single man with an MBA from Vanderbilt University. He had gone to work for the Exxon Corporation and found himself living and working in Houston, Texas. Life was easy. He had plenty of money for entertainment and travel and dining. Mark had been raised in the church, but he had slipped away some in his young adult years. He went to worship several times a year, but most Sundays were just lazy days at home. He watched ball games and scanned the Sunday paper. And that's when it happened. He was watching the Dallas Cowboys football game and reading the Sunday paper during the commercials. And as he was looking at the paper during one of those commercials, an advertisement in the paper caught his eye. It was a simple ad showing the picture of a hungry child. And the caption read, I was hungry. And under the caption was a plea for help. And somehow he couldn't get his eyes off that child. The game resumed on television and he put down the paper. But the child was still in Mark's mind. He thought of how he would love to help someone like that child. He'd love to give food to a hungry person. He did a lot of entertaining, but they were always his friends. He would have them over for a cookout, and they would have him over. He would take them to lunch, they would take him to lunch. That's the way it was. Mark looked at the paper again. He knew he had to do something, but he didn't want to sit down and just write a check. He thought of his church. Early the next week, he went and talked with his pastor about the church's hunger relief program. Those programs, he learned, included both direct food aid, as well as programs designed to help people become self-sufficient. 
Mark got very excited. And that day he made a commitment. He decided to give the same amount of money to his church's hunger programs that he spent on entertainment. And he, uh, when he left the pastor's office, he thought perhaps he'd promised too much, but in the weeks that followed, he discovered it was not too much. He was able to give what he had promised, and he felt good about it. And why shouldn't he? For that is how people like Yola Ten and Abba Eben and Vija have survived. Let me say something you may already know. Our United Methodist Church has a fantastic relief program. Our denomination has an unmatched ability to take our contributions of money and convert it into food aid and into long-term relief ministries. Our organization is lean and it's efficient. It's a ministry for which we can be thankful. There's no better way to contribute to mission than through our church. In today's scripture, Jesus is inviting us to help those who cannot help us in return. Does that mean sacrifice? Well, yes. More money contributed to the relief of hunger and poverty means less that we have to spend on other things. Well, do we get anything in return? Yes. Joy. Deep joy abiding joy. It seems like a contradiction, but our sacrifice brings fulfillment. Our sacrifice gives life in every way. Life to others, life to us. Jesus said, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the words of our creed. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of God fulfilled. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, reminding us always of the truth of Christ, our inspiration and strength in times of joy and sorrow. We believe our faith should be apparent in our words of love and acts of service, that the kingdom of God may be a present reality here on earth. Amen. You may be seated. Right, correct? Let's do that.
stand and sing this last one with us.
Christ leads, let us help others. May God bless you all. Amen. Have a great week.